Welcome, and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Nancy Newell, the Head of Strategic Alliances and Marketing Experiences for Public Sector at Adobe. Nancy, thanks for joining us. Great. Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to our conversation today. I look forward to it as well. Uh, to just get started here, let's dive into all things HISPs. Of course, they are the agencies that have been identified by various administrations, uh, being the the agencies that have the the biggest uh, presence in the American public in delivering these kinds of services. And just given all of that, what do you see of the what, what do you see as the challenges that HISPs face to further improve service delivery? Well, I think there's a lot of areas there. I mean, they all are unique, right? They all deliver different services to different constituents or citizens. And, you know, every one of them is going to have to probably have a unique subset of how they solve their issues. And it's not gonna be one of those things where we can just say one, you know, let's let's sit down and figure out, you know, one, one solution that's gonna work for everyone. And so, you know, as I was doing a little bit of prep for this around just where where they are in the journey, right? every one of them is is looking for different things that they're going to need to really solve this. So I think that's going to be one of the key, key things we have to figure out. There's a lot of them that are going to need to catch up that aren't where they need to be just to be status quo. And then, then there are those that are ahead of the curve and they're looking at this as, you know, a new in a way, innovative way to really bring, you know, what's possible from government. And so I think it's one of those things where we just have to take it create that journey and, you know, work with the different agencies to understand their, their issues and bring the right players to the table to really be able to solve that so that it's, it's a longer term goal versus just the issues they're facing right now. There's a lot there, a lot to do. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, there have been a number of policy documents that we've been tracking from the Biden administration on this idea, not just of, uh, not just have customer experience, but of digital experience. You know, a lot of these services are moving online. People expect them to be online. And so that is what OMB is looking at here. You know, specifically, a lot of this guidance ties back to some legislation that has been on the books for a while, the right. 21st Century IDEA Act. Just to, uh, you know, maybe catch up our audience on some of the, the key points of what 21st Century IDEA is all about uh, and, and what this recent guidance is all about, you know, what what uh, are the key things to keep in mind and how is that all setting a higher standard for uh, a digital experience in government? Well, my view is, you know, it's they're asking for those experiences to be from, from what I do and from where we are at Adobe, that omnichannel experience. So really where you are receiving government service is very similar to what we're used to getting from commercial right in our commercial industries. I have watched since that came out and even now some of the newer, you know, newer guidances that they put out there. I mean, there's going to have to be accountability around it. The guidance is going to have to be pretty clear on what the expectation is so that a lot of these agencies can prioritize because there is so much to do. Where do you start? How do you get that going? I think funding is key, right? To take what we have, to take what's existing and expect that to work is not realistic. There's going to have to be the right funding, but I think a lot of the stakeholders that we work with Adobe on the client side, as well as within vendors and within a lot of the, you know, the, um, you know, system integrators and all the consultants that are out there, they're going to have to be empowered to make those decisions and really make the changes that are needed to go out there. When, when the time comes to really dig deep and, and make those decisions, having the right people at the table, you can't just have the IT team there. You can't just have public affairs there. You can't just have a bunch of vendors there. Everyone's going to have to come together, really look at the ins and outs of the journey that agency's on. And again, for each agency independent. What I like, though, is recently some of that guidance has switched, switched and there were some things that came out and it was digital first, not digital only. And as someone that has worked in marketing her, her entire career, I love that, right? Because it's, it's, it's helping us take those public experiences that are out there and really provide the strategy around those channels. What are channels? What are the things that government needs? It's going to make them take that commercial lens and look at things like apps and websites and that in-person experience, that office time, those kiosks that are in airports or, you know, in our government offices, the, the email that's generated, social channels, all the places, these different channels that they're going to interact. It's going to make them look at that and say, how does that work? And to make it effective and to really, I think, meet the needs of what, what they're asking in this order, whether it's the 21st Act or even some of the recent guidelines, that full channel strategy is going to need to be there because that is what's going to help somebody look at an agency and say, okay, this is a brand. 
this is the agency, here's what they're promising me, are they really delivering it? Which again, when it's delivered from the brand all the way through the channels through what they need and we've met their needs, that builds trust, that re- that builds that repeatability. Um, you know, I think on the other end, we have to look at having all of that digitized where it needs to be like what they're asking for really will help empower that workforce that's behind there trying to scale this, right? And so I like how they've come back and they've said this whole concept of, you know, not digital only, but really, you know, and not first. We, we really want it to look at the entire experience. I think that's just critical to what we're trying to do. Yeah. And to zero on, in on that phrase of digital first, but not digital only, I that's think exactly it right. back to your Absolutely. idea of omni-channel experience that it's not just delivering that excellent experience online, but, you know, for the people who prefer to interact with government that way to okay. pick up the phone or, you know, for some agencies be in person or, or, you know, even correspond through snail mail, you know, all those things need to happen. Um, I'm just wondering, there's a lot of things to keep, tra- uh, keep track of. How do agencies uh, ensure an excellent omni-channel experience, not just an excellent digital first experience? I think they're going to have to look at like where they are in the journey. And so when you look at the experience that you're trying to deliver, it's got to be seamless. And that word is so, you know, one of those things people go, what does seamless really mean? Well, it's that end to end journey you're taking them on. And and going back to your point earlier, like, I love the fact they're using Omnichannel because that when I saw that in what was written, I go, wow, they really are focusing in on what that needs to be. It's got to be personalized. It's got to be based on the data that's existing, that that behavioral data, so that you really know what does that citizen want? Where do they want to interact with government? How do they want it? You know, what is it going to say? So that it's that approach that you're receiving already in the commercial world. And if, if government can shift to that, where you know, even some of the different you know sites that you you sign up for, there's connectivity, there's coordination, there's pre-population of forms and things like that where they actually understand who their constituents and what they want. I think that's really going to help them build that brand. I think they're going to have to look at the, the awareness around it. So once you get all this set up, are people really aware that it's there? Are they aware that it's now easy? There's a whole perception out there we're going to have to get past, right? Um, and so some of those things I think will help us take this where people really want to be engaged. They want to enroll. And eventually, hopefully, they'll see the value of what these government services do. The other piece that I think is critical here is that they're equitable and that they can have access to these services, to this digital experience anywhere. So not just at your fingertips, but also in person. Also, you know, the the language pieces are there. It's, you know, it's something that's got, you know, um, an easy place to access it anywhere. You know, there's the demographic has been looked at. There's a lot of elements there just making sure that it's an accessible place for everyone. And I think that's going to be important. A couple of things that I read, though, around like wait times and being able to access, you know, in real time, a real person. Those are things that are going to have to be monitored in in an agile environment that really allows government to respond to that digital experience that that they're trying to take citizens through. So there's a there's like you said, there's a lot of factors here. And, you know, with the right teams around it and the right resources and technology, I think it is something that, that very easily can be put in place. And and be a game changer for our country and for what citizens are receiving as value from our from our government. Yeah. And one other point that you made that jumped out at me is just empowering the federal workforce to do all the things that you described. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and you know, goes back also to your point about building the right team here. Um, you know, we hear so much about gathering feedback from customers and incorporating that into iterative design, but like that also goes for federal employees because more often than not, they want to deliver those excellent services. And sometimes right. they don't have the right tools or the right processes in place. Exactly. Uh, so just given all of that, you know, what can agencies do to, you know, make sure that feedback is being one heard and two incorporated? I mean, I think some of that is just having the right technology with your, your employee, right? I mean, if, if they've got the right dashboards, they've got the right analytics platform, they've got a, a campaign, you know, places that are that are digitized or automated, and it's not them having to, you know, one-on-one with every citizen. It, it's got to be an, an, an environment where they very quickly have, you know, a profile of that customer. They know what they're wanting. They're able to take them on the digital journey that they want based on that data. All of that's got to be in, a, in an environment where that employee shows up to work every day and says, okay, I know, how, I know where I am. I know what needs to happen. If that is not there from a technology perspective, I mean, you're really setting yourself up to, you know, not be able to scale it. I think 
like you're going to need to. And that, 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 you know, will go into a whole lot of other issues where, where your employee's not happy and, you know, all those kind of things. And then you've got retention issues and all those kind of pieces. And then you're down talking recruiting and all those areas. Right. So I think it's, it's one of those deals where that's why I said earlier, having those people at the table and not just your CIO, but making sure you've got IT at all different levels so that they're really able to say, this is what I need. And we're listening to them. And then once we give it to them, empowering them to really make the right changes. Does that make sense? It does. And just to double click on one other point you made as well, is just the technology piece of things. It is, you know, a piece, not the whole piece of the puzzle, but, you know, it is a, a game changer in a lot of regards and agencies have more tools in the toolbox than ever. Just zooming out here a little bit, what are the tools that really matter and really, you know, help drive these CX improvements? What are the things that are top of mind for you? I would say, I mean, there's a lot of buzzwords out there, right? I mean, like web modernization, digitalization. I mean, there's a lot of things like that. I definitely think these technical capabilities are going to be critical, though. I think you're going to have to have that pre-effort to figure out where is the agency? What do they currently have? What's at their fingertips? What's working? What's not working? A lot of that's going to have to happen before you ever bring in web modernization, all these buzzwords, you know, digital, digital digitalization, I can't even say it, citizen engagement, like all these big buzzwords. And I think once you've laid out what that journey or experience needs to look like, then taking those words like web modernization and saying, okay, we really need a good content management system. We need to be able to really have true real-time web analytics so that we're able to create that environment, that agile environment that allows it to move forward. We need to be able to take that journey that, that, that they're on and make sure we didn't lose them halfway through the journey, that they truly went from end to end of that experience. Those are analytics behind that journey, by the way. We need to have forms and, and those are modernized or someone goes in, it's pre-populated, they click, yes, I want this and it, and it goes through. The e-signature is digitized. Like those are things that you're getting with some of the agencies, but not every agency. I also think just understanding from a, an employee perspective, how are all these assets and all this content being managed? Is it in a way where it's, it's an easy thing to grab or it's an easy thing to have approvals around? All those kind of internal areas are gonna have to be thought through. Um, I would also say like from the citizen perspective, are we really optimizing that engagement? Are we looking at testing, understanding what those outreach tools look like? Do we have access to social channels and web and all those areas? Um, and then what is that commerce? If there's a need, a need to transact or have PII or financial data, how is that being managed? Uh, I think about call centers. You know, a lot of our government agencies still utilize these call centers. How is that optimized? Is there a bot or a, a, a desk chat, you know, um, assistant right there ready to help you? Um, is there that customer data platform? And does that go across multi-agencies? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, or is it just the one agency that you've, you've, you've logged into? Could it be multi-agencies using that? Um, and then looking at that full journey orchestration, which isn't just the technology, but it's the strategy. You've got to have that consulting arm there with you and, and the true partnership of teams sitting there trying to kind of intersect all of that. Um, you know, one thing I see is like, you want that one-stop shop, right? Uh, one of our agencies that we work for, the Federal Student Aid, we, we had a tool where we were using, um, you know, a campaign tool to really do that outreach and that, and you know, through direct mail, SMS, text, whatever. And with that tool and the technology, it gave the team on the ground the ability to say, yeah, we really are reaching the right people. And I think sometimes we, we set up these websites, we set up all this digital technology, but we don't look at it and say, are we really reaching our end user, our demographic that we want to? Um, another one that we worked with the CDC, we, 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 we had two of our technologies, analytics and campaign. They were critical to supporting the newsletters and in, in the time of really needing to get information out about you know what they're what they're saying about diseases or crisis or things like that. So I think there's some very very important areas um, that we're trying you know to to make sure our technology is built into with the teams that are actually making that happen. Whether it's um, you know the the government client sitting there or you know a, another you know partner that we're working with or something like that. So I do think all of that's going to be critical. It's going to have to all be working together. Yeah, Nancy, all great points there. Uh, we're going to have to take a quick break, but we'll get back to all of this and more. My guest today is Nancy Newell, the Head of Strategic Alliances and Marketing Experiences for Public Sector at Adobe. I'm your moderator, Jory Heckman, on Elevating Public Service, a deep dive into his modernization, accessibility, and constituent engagement sponsored by Kerasoft on Federal News Network. 
Welcome back to Elevating Public Service, a deep dive into HISP modernization, accessibility, and constituent engagement, sponsored by Kerasoft on Federal News Network. My guest today is Nancy Newell, the Head of Strategic Alliances and Marketing Experiences for Public Sector at Adobe. I'm your moderator, Jory Heckman. Nancy, just to take a half step back from what we were talking about earlier, it's important to guess to get a little bit of context of, of where the federal government stands with CX improvements because we've been talking about this for a number of years. Just zoom out here a little bit, give us a sense of what milestones have already transpired with CX improvements in the recent past, uh, where things are now and where are things going? Yeah, you know, it's interesting in, in preparing for this, I you know, was reading kind of the, the latest quarterly, you know, output of kind of where what they accomplished in 2023 and then what they're looking forward to in 2024 and kind of where their priorities are. The key thing I saw is, you know, we mentioned this a little bit earlier, is every single one of them was at a different point in the journey. And they will also they were also biting off different levels of, you know, some things were really big things they were going to do, and then some were a couple of little things, you know. So it was like, I guess, you know, assessing where they are and the, the milestones that they need to make to kind of to do this. There were a bunch of them, you know, that I could see in the in the different agencies where they were really trying to get survey information. They wanted research. They wanted feedback. They want to understand what those citizens or constituents are really wanting as part of that experience. A lot of these agencies are, you know, are the front line with our citizens and, and helping them understand, you know, when they're traveling or when they're needing, you know, housing applications or if it's, you know, State Department stuff, you know, making sure that they kind of know where to go and it's an easy thing. You could tell that there's a lot of inconsistencies around kind of where they are on that journey. Multiple ones were in the process of saying, we need to map out where we're going. We don't really know what this program is asking of us at where we are currently. So we need to lay that out and come up with our, our plans for the future. And I, I do think that's critical for all of them. If they're not on that journey map, they need to figure that out. Um, one of the ones that was on there quite a bit was online experiences. You know, what are those portals? What are those technical assistance? I saw that several times in there, the application process. Um, and then also were there portals? How do we improve that experience once they're within the agency portal? Is it easy? Is it design easy? And, and what's great about what I'm seeing here is, you know, that's, that's the brand. That's the look and feel. That's the content. That's all the things that you're interacting with, whether it's through the channels we talked about or if it's something that's existing. So they're, they're, they're taking all of that into account. Then they're making sure that it is seamless and that, that all the content pieces, brand pieces, they all match up, which a lot of them currently don't necessarily. What you get on your phone may not look the same on a desktop or at a kiosk. And so they're making sure those things are together. And I think that's important. Multiple ones uh, talked about equitable services and how that is so important and called out the need for translation and access. And, you know, are they in the right areas where people could do a walk up, you know, a kiosk versus having to pull it on their phone if they don't have a phone? And is it something that will translate into the content that's needed on site? Those are going to be a, a, a different thing. And then, you know, because we talked about the channel approach, I think as that has come down and that request has happened for a multi-channel approach, a lot of them were saying, what is that experience for us? We're going to have to, to figure that out and, and, and look at it deeper than where we currently are. And what I would say is no matter where they are in that journey, the, the things that they're looking at and the things that they're trying to do are going to be critical for the end success. And, and it's a two-year journey. Most of these, it's going to be two to three years before this is really where it needs to be. Um, and I don't know what the timeline is and kind of the, the overall charge, but I do think it's around that. And it's going to take that. It's not going to be something they're going to have done in a couple of months and we're going to experience it. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking previously about uh, feedback from the perspective of federal employees, uh, making sure that their voices are heard. But of course, that feedback is also equally important for the customers who are looking for these services. Right. And, you know, you were talking about journey mapping, you're talking about some other things there. Um, you know, how is how is user feedback, you know, enabling this kind of human centered design and more importantly, giving agencies the information they need so that when they are doing this iterative design, they're not guessing what the customers want. They know exactly what they want. They are coming up with solutions on how to meet that need. I would say, I think it's important that there, there are two pieces of kind of that design and, you know, you can go out and do surveys and do push surveys of somebody's used your, you know, service recently and just ask them for how can they make it better and all that. A lot of times that data is really good big picture to pull in and kind of get if there's a, a census. Most people won't spend the time to really fill out a survey, 
Um, but there are a lot of agencies that use surveys to really understand how did you interact? How was our staff? All those kind of things. And it's very, very important. Um, I was in healthcare years ago and healthcare definitely uses it uh, a lot. I just recently went through that with a family member and we've gotten a ton of surveys, fill them out because as a marketing person, I feel like it's important that we're giving feedback where it needs to be heard because if they can take that and improve the experience for someone else, it's worth it. What's so great is when you have an analytics platform or you have the data platforms in place, you now can get all this through, through behavioral data and taking that data and understanding in that user experience, where you're going to catch their attention, how many, how many texts, how many emails, how many, you know, interactions do you have to have with them before they're going to respond? Are they going to go through the whole journey in technology or are they going to want it fast, a couple clicks and they're done? A lot of those analytics that are based, you know, from, from things that we touch every day, right, are going to help build off those journeys. What I find though with government agencies is they don't always have the users connected in a way where they can pull that data. And so some of those demographics and, and data pieces are probably gonna have to be used by you know, either purchasing that data or trying to understand you know, whether it's in a market, you know, what, it, what is the typical you know, demographic in, this, in the state of whatever, and you know, what, what do people buy there? There's a lot of that kind of general data that you can pull in as well. So I think, I think you're, it's gonna have to be a hybrid of that stuff, right, that gets pulled in. Um, but it's gonna be critical to build out that journey and get the journey where I think they're gonna need it. Yeah. And to zero, to zero in on something you uh, mentioned earlier, you know, equitable services being a, a key component of all this, what can agencies do? What more can they do to make these public facing services uh, more accessible to underserved populations? Yeah, it's it's a tough one. I am um, a couple of years ago, I was working on a state, um, an Eastern state, and I'll never forget it was a tiny little state. And I was talking to some of their marketing leaders and they were like, well, you know, we have, I think it was like 95 plus languages. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, what do you mean? They're like, yeah, there's 95 different languages and we have to make sure, you know, we're translating all those. And it was like this aha moment. This was four or five years ago. I'm like, wow, that is a whole different way of doing marketing. You know, years ago, you didn't have all of those. And so you've got to make sure, and those are citizens, those are people in that state that need these services. And so you've got to be able to relate and, and meet them. And I think language is one piece of it, but I also look at learning adjustments. There are a lot of people out there that have learning challenges that don't allow them to, to you know, look at a website the same way someone without that does. And so we're going to have to adjust to some of those things as well. I think the, the access word that gets tied into that is even more critical because no matter what your demographic is or your background or your socio financial background or any of those kind of areas, you want to make sure that all citizens have access to services, right? And so it may it may be that that demographic doesn't have a cell phone, can't afford a cell phone, but you've got to have a, a place within their area that they can potentially walk to or you know get access to and, and be able to to access those services. That's challenging because that is that's a huge huge geography market that you're going to have to figure out. So there's some of those kind of things. Or is there a kiosk that could be in a community center? There's some things like that that I've worked with clients on that I think is important. The other thing is making sure that all those things we just said are consistent. Is that experience the same on the desktop as it is at the kiosk at the community center is that it is with the desk employee and the actual you know, facility? So all of that's gotta be the same thing. And then what are the compliance standards? There's a lot of compliance and disability accessibility standards that have to be there and making sure as a marketing professional, not something I've necessarily been an expert on, but you really need to know that those are there and there's guidelines. Another one that came to mind recently with me, I was dealing with someone who um, needed audio, um, like reading a website, their, their vision wasn't great and they needed audio um, where the website did that. So that's another piece, video options where something could be done through video. If you go to our current websites that are out there, it doesn't necessarily have all that. So just things like that though, I don't think we always think about as accessible, you know, closed captioning that you see on television. I mean, those are things that really need to be within those marketing channels. And then translating. I think that's been mentioned that a little bit earlier, but those are just key things we've got to take into account as we're as we're building out this marketing omni-channel experience with them. It's going to be critical that that you meet all these people where they are. Um, and I and I think that's a key thing here. It's personalized to them. Nancy, we covered a lot of ground here, but I think we're gonna have to leave it there. Thanks again to today's guest, Nancy Newell, the head of strategic alliances and marketing experiences for public sector at Adobe. 
I'm your moderator, Jory Heckman, and you're listening to Federal News Network. For more on this discussion, visit federalnewsnetwork.com and search HISP. That's H-I-S-P.